Welcome to Grand Prairie Update. I'm Terry Briggs. And I'm Don Johnson. Here's what's happening in your city. <laughs> Kindness at school and community service. That was the theme Thursday night as hundreds of Grand Prairie students and parents turned out for the annual Rachel's Challenge Rally. The rally encourages students to act with kindness and compassion in memory of Rachel Scott, the first person killed during the Columbine school shootings in 1999. She was known as a girl that was kind, compassionate, reached out to people. Um, she believed that really one person through kindness and compassion could start a chain reaction. So uh, we travel full time and share the story and here at Grand Prairie, this is something they've been doing for years um, and tonight is really just a, a, an accumulation of all the acts of kindness that the students from across the district have done just to celebrate, you know, that kindness really does matter. The rally also kicked off a new city initiative, Ruthie's Choice Service to Your Community. It's designed to encourage involvement in community service and is named in honor of the late city council member and civic leader, Ruthie Jackson. There was plenty of Texas hospitality on display at locations all over town as Grand Prairie celebrated the 30th annual National Night Out on a beautiful fall evening. And we're thankful for each one of you who have given up your time to come out tonight. National Night Out is a campaign that involves 50 states and more than 10,000 communities and is designed to bring citizens and local officials together for neighborhood block parties, cookouts, and yes, even impromptu concerts. This is what you want for a community. Look around. Different shades, different everything, and it, everyone's having fun. I love it. This is what we moved here for. The event not only gives neighbors a chance to meet in a fun social setting, but also gives police and law enforcement officials a chance to partner up with them in an effort to fight crime. With this, we are all getting together. We're getting to know each other. We know each other's cars, what they look like. We know what people who live there look like, and we talk with each other and know each other. So when something isn't right, we know, and we can call the police, and they've been very good to come out and check for us. This is a great city, and it's got very genuine, good, nice people in it that we love serving, and we just want to increase that interaction. Here in Grand Prairie, more than 50 organizations hosted National Night Out celebrations this year. Grand Prairie voters will go to the polls on November 5th to fill vacancies on the City Council and decide a sales tax referendum. On the City Council ballot, three candidates have filed for the vacancy in District 3, Bill Nash, Lila Thorne, and Kurt Johnson. Four candidates have filed for the vacancy in District 7 at large, Charlie Warmack, Jeff Copeland, R.J. Delena, and Max Coleman. The council election is necessary because Deputy Mayor Pro Tem Ruthie Jackson, who represented District 7, and Bill Thorne, who represented District 3, both died in August. The ballot also includes a referendum on the use of the sales tax revenue collected for the Crime Control and Prevention District. In 2012, voters overwhelmingly reapproved a 10-year extension of the one-quarter cent sales tax being collected by the district. The tax revenue is being used to pay off the construction debt on the public safety building. However, more revenue is being collected than needed for the debt. So district officials are asking voters to approve using the excess funds to hire and equip more police officers. Early voting for the special election begins October 21st and continues through November 1st. The polls will be open on November 5th from 7 a.m. until 7 p.m. For more information, go to the city's website at gptx.org slash elections. Culture, pageantry, and history were the themes of the day as the city honored one of its longtime leaders at a dedication ceremony that officially renamed its newest recreation center. Formerly known as the Bowles Life Center, the Tony Shotwell Life Center will now carry the name of the city councilman who is recognized as the man most responsible for getting the facility built by convincing city officials to fund the project. 
and we had a community meeting about the bond election and actually there was zero in the bond election for this area of town zero nothing and i got asked the question what's in it for me and my answer back to the community was at this time nothing but if this passes and we help the rest of the city they'll owe us one and maybe we can get in i said a rec center Maybe move the police storefront out of the rented area that we've got. We need a branch library up here. Maybe we can do it all at one time. He was always ready to vote what was right for the whole city, but he never let go of this project, I can tell you, and, and, until, until we funded it. I'm so proud. The Shotwell Life Center opened in 2007 and has a full-size gym and large fitness area, as well as a game room, public library, computer lab, banquet rooms, and a police storefront. You would not have this facility here if it were not for Mr. Shotwell, I guarantee you that. So uh, he's deserving of this honor. Thank you very much for coming, and Tony, congratulations. Shotwell has served on the Grand Prairie City Council since 1995, representing District 5, the area of the city that the center serves. That's it for this edition of Grand Prairie Update. Hope you'll join us next time.